Hello, and uh, welcome Hello. to episode 30. And for uh, this session, me and John, who you've seen before in our uh, previous vlogs, and uh, another friend of my, well, friend, right. just on winner. Uh, um, Keith, we're uh, fishing at Horseshoe Lake uh, this session. You told me lawns. Yeah, <laughs> Sevington, you said to me. <laughs> so, we're at Horseshoe Lake in Letchlade anyway, so. Um, uh, <laughs> look, looking forward to this session, it's uh, my one year anniversary blog, so we're having a bit of a social with these two scallywags. Does that mean you're only two? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, only just pulled up in the car park, all our gear's still in the back of the car, so... Um, you did promise me sweets. <laughs> yeah, I brought sweets. Anyway, right, let's crack on before we're never going to get fishing, so... Anyway, let's go fishing. Fishing. I'm going fishing. It says we can see we're going fishing. <laughs> that out on. Told you we promised us sweeties. Yeah, we've got sweets. <laughs> I'm not sleeping here with you though anyway. Well, unless you give me two more sweets. <laughs> right guys. Uh, we just got to our swims. Uh, we've picked uh, two double swims down on the uh, Summer Bay side of the lake. Uh, we've had to pick double swims because uh, me and John and Keith are next to each other. I've just chose to fish with three rods, which costs extra. And there's a uh, single peg and double peg swims on this lake. If you're in a single peg swim, you can only fish with two rods or one person. Um, yeah, one person in one swim with two rods. So I've so we've got two double swims next to each other. So I could fish with three rods and John and Keith are behind me and they're gonna in one peg fishing two rods each. So that's why we've picked two double swims next to each other. But only just got here so all the gear's still on the floor and on the barrow and everything. So right, I'll get back to you when I'm doing something interesting and not just waffling on. Right, see you later. Alright guys, uh, just been having a plod round with the old marker rod, just thought I'd show you what I'm dealing with. Uh, there you go, thick silk, silk, silk weed, no matter where I've cast, that's all I've brought in every time. Lots, I've brought in more than that, I've brought in a little bit less than that on some casts, but it seems like wherever I cast out in front of me, that's what I'm going to be fishing on. Lots of blanket silk weed. Which isn't too bad, I mean it's good for naturals, I mean I can see lots of naturals in there now, so uh, I mean a PVA bag on top of that will flatten that, but I can't find any clear clear spots as such, so but as long as I've got that in front of me and not too much Canadian, which well, I haven't found any really, so I don't mind fishing on top of that, that's not too bad. So. Oh well. Better crack on, I suppose. Alright, then, guys, just gonna uh, show you my spod mix before I start uh, baiting up my areas. So, I think I need to put out a lot of bait, seeing I'm fishing on uh, silk weed to try and uh, get the fish in and tearing up that silk weed. So, here we are. So, I've shown before in previous blogs what my uh, spod mix is made of, but for those of you that haven't seen, bulk of it is a uh, pigeon conditioner which I've been soaking and boiled for 48 hours. And then with that, I've got um, kilo sweet corn, just the cheap stuff from the supermarket. There's some boilie in there, a whole kilo of uh, Connect Bates boilies went in there. Um, there's uh, some Hinders salt and pepper hemp has gone in there. Um, to make it a bit cloudy as well, I've put in a kilo's worth of Hinders nut sludge. And then to stodge the whole lot up, I've put in um, 
at uh, about a kilo, kilo and a half worth of uh, Vitalin dog food as well. Uh, as you can see, it all looks very nice and particularly, very carpy. So I'm going to put a good bait of that out and hope the fish get on it. And uh, also, while I was soaking this um, pigeon conditioner, I uh, was soaking it in uh, molasses as well to give it a nice sweet flavour as well. All right, let's get some spotted out. Hi right, guys, it's uh, just gone past I think about 3 o'clock in the afternoon now. Been fishing a few hours now after uh, sort of spending a bit of time marking up and spodding out a load of bait. And uh, got three different rigs on at the moment. I haven't showed you rigs yet because I've just, just spent quite a while marking up and spodding out bait. I just wanted to get fishing so whenever I do recasts on my rods I'll show you the rigs precisely when I before I do recasts, but on the right hand rod I'm fishing a chod rig. Middle rod is um, uh, just a lead clip, rig tubing lead clip, and I'm fishing uh, two bits of fake corn on that rod. And I cast out with uh, some Nash chain reactions. And the uh, left rod is um, lead clip, lead tu uh, rig tubing again, but that's gone into a PVA bag and is. Um, fishing a bottom bait cell dumbbell tipped with a bit of a uh, fake corn so being a bit quiet so far I mean, the only thing that's given me a couple of bleeps so far is a swan swimming past me rod tips and clipping me rods but I'm not sure if I'll have any wind noise on this bit apologize if there is because I've got the wind right in my face so but, let's just have a little zoom in on my rods uh, some of you uh, might have seen these on Facebook after I made them. I don't know if I can zoom in on them. Uh, me new bobbins that I've just made myself. R2-D2 bobbins, which uh, took me an afternoon to make. So they're getting their first little run out. Right then. So, I've uh, well, Chris, how have uh, you been doing this? <laughs> yeah, it's been great. So anyway, yeah, I'm in uh, John and Keith's swim, so uh, I've just come to see what rigs um oh bleep on the middle rod. So yeah, so I've just come to see what uh well not see, but Keith's gonna explain what rigs and bait uh John and Keith are fishing and their baiting approach, etc. So take it away Keith, how are we fishing? Oh, we, we spent this morning trying to find a, the gravel bar or some form of clear patch from the weed, which we did finally eventually find about 50 55 yards out. Quicker than Chris as well did. Yeah, well, well Chris. Didn't and Chris then, need uh, some help? We spotted out maize, a bit of bar, particle and a few pellets on the top. And then the rigs we're using, the rig on one rod I'm using uh, Mepha feeder uh, on a totally naked, no braid, uh, on fluorocarbon with a a rig coming off the top of the feeder, basic plank inside, and I'm using uh, one of my own boilies that I've made, which uh, at the moment we've had a few knocks on, but we haven't actually had any fish. Oh, on the yeah. other rig, I'm using a small hair rig, really small, about three and a half inches straight to the end of a bomb, a little weight of about two and a half ounces. Oh, and a little knock there, or a little knock there on the is that on the same one again? So, you know, the only thing is, there's a lot of weed in here. You really have to look for the gravel bars in here to actually get anywhere. Well, I tried. Yeah, I did. you did try, yeah. I tried and all I found was silkweed. Yeah, but that's not too bad. We, yeah, like you I, say, PVA I, it, heavy PVA bag I don't mind fishing on silkweed. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's, it's, the only it's easier to fish in than in Canadian pond weed. Oh, definitely. All right, guys, so we've got a little map of um, Horseshoe. So, uh, it's it's lawns, it's just flooded. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to get uh, Keith to point out where we're actually fishing on the uh, lake. So, as you can see, those four little red dots there, which are all double swims. So we're fishing 
51, which is me, and 52, which is John and Keith. So, there we go. Nice big place, 62 acres is um, Horseshoe Lake. And we've got pretty much all this side to ourselves. There's only one other angler a bit further down, which is about there. About three miles away. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so there we are. Cup Society. Lawns. <laughs> what? Lawns. Look, it's just a bit flooded more than normal. <laughs> Turn around, Chris. Have a look. Look, look, look. What? Uh, <laughs> oh my good god, look at that. It's just a little bit more mm. flooded than Yeah, normal. it's about yeah. 60 acres bigger than Lawns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only just. Right then, so now you know where we're fishing. Right, hopefully we'll get back to you next time with... A fish. <laughs> uh, Keith's uh, just wound in one of his rods, so um, we can have a closer look at his rig now. So, uh, do you want to explain what you got there, Keith? Well, we've basically got a two and a half ounce method feeder on there, which I pack with trout pellets, a, a coating of trout pellets, and then I'll um, set or basically set the nylon on um, into the rig, and then I'll feed, I put some more on just to pack it down. Um, it's all fluorocarbon. I go about a meter of fluorocarbon, and I run in this rig so that it always ends up there. It basically looks like a helicopter rig, to be honest with you, but with a yeah. method feeder on. Um, and as you can see, it's only a small hook, and I've um, de-ringed it. So just a little bit more natural. De-ringed it? What, you took the ring <laughs> <Yeah>. off? <laughs> oh, de-ringing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but uh, that's it, basically. Yeah, so basically it's a helicopter rig, but it, with a it, feeder it, island exactly. and a Exactly, and I'm, I'm, the only difference is I could quite easily adjust this everywhere I wanted it, but at the moment I want to play it so that it just sits within the vicinity of my feeder. Lovely. My feeder. That's that it. Looks like a... Almost fish, professional, doesn't Looks it? like a fish catching rig there, Keith. Well, we beeps. hope, we hope. Beeps, We've had a few knocks on it, but I've already drawn it through because I want to change the bait again. But I may, it may well be just the fact that the bait is quite, because of the weed in there, it stands out like a sore thumb on, on a dark green background. These are my boys I made anyway, so that's just right. basically the rig, isn't it? All right, we'll leave it at that then because I've only got 90 minutes worth of filming left. Yeah, that's what I think. guys so it's not long just gone uh, I think it's about 10 o'clock half 10 now something like that but there's been uh, no action obviously otherwise you'd have seen it by now I think both John and Keith they've had a couple of little bleeps each and their bobbins have had a sort of a bit of a move but but no uh, no actual runs yet from any of us but because so I've never been here before, so I don't know what this lake fish is like, whether it's like a daytime sort of bite lake or a sort of a nighttime bite lake, so... Obviously nothing's happened in the daytime yet, so obviously... Well, I hope, hopefully it'll be a nighttime sort of bite kind of place then. Uh, yeah, it's getting, getting a bit nippy now, so... Uh, just sort of going to get my head down now, get me a nice warm sleeping bag. And hopefully there'll be something in the night. Oh, morning guys. <coughs> oh, I have got a clue what time. Yeah, just gone eight o'clock. Oh, no action obviously in the night, otherwise you'd have seen it. But uh, I have had a couple of um, knocks on me uh, trolley rod this morning. About an hour ago I had a one pick up on it. The, Bobbing come tight to the rod, ran at me bivvy, sort of picked the rod up, nothing there. I uh, cast it back out and uh, literally about five minutes ago had another knock on it, exactly the same thing. 
the volume come up really tight to the rod, cut to the rod, wound up to it, nothing there. Uh, not sure what's going on there. Well, oh guys, I've just wound one of my rods in because I had a bit of a weed clag around me buddy lying under my rod tip and it was giving me constant bleep so I've just wound it into a little de weed me rig so I can show you. This is me uh, naked chod rig. So we start at the lead end. I've got a two ounce lead and uh, see the sleeve on there is one of the um, where have I put it? There we go. It's one of the ESP chod sleeves, and um, this this part of the sleeve here is a really soft rubber. So if you get a fish and the hook length comes down, it you can see that it all cushions up. That so gives you a bit of cushioning when you're playing the fish, and then that way the lead isn't banging right off around by around by the fish's mouth. Got a good idea. So then, just a few inches above that, I got a bead which is actually one of the new um corded naked chod kits it comes on a little thing like that ready to go you put that top one on first then you chod hook length and then you put a bottom bead on which is the one i've just showed you so that's it i've got about i don't know about through about three foot running and then that top bead has got like a little drop off bead on it which comes in the kit with the naked chod kit is those beads. If you can make out, it's like a little sort of a horseshoe shape sort of bead. And that just clips on that top bead. And if you ever get snagged snagged up or cracked off, that that bead just pulls off. The hook length can come over that bead and it's the fish is free to get off your rig. So let's just put that bead back on. So if you can Make it out bead, look, and there's the bead in my fingers. That just, just pushes on like that. And then, like I say, if you ever get cracked off, that bead just pushes off. Completely safe, brilliant rig. And just above that, I've got a quarter sinker. And that's just the sinker that me flying back lead sits on. So that's me right hand rod. That's the rod that's sort of chucked into the weediest part of the lake that's in front of me. So, alright, all right, now I've declagged it, get it chucked back out there. Oh, the hook bait on that chod is just a connect bait or season red pop up. Alright, I think I need to declag my other two rods because they've got weed around them as well. But, yeah, if you heard that beep, that's just the metal rod with weed clag around the rod tip, so I'll get that wound in in a minute, put some fresh boot on and show the rigs. Right, catch you here with, uh, with the next rod. Right then guys, just wound in rod number two. Uh, show you this rig. We'll start off at the hook end as ever. So, the bait is two bits of... Uh, fake buoyant corn which has been glugged in the end of beetle in as usual as you all probably know I use by now BB shot which makes uh, two grains of corn just critically balanced just right the shot was about there to be fair when I wound it in I've just moved it down about another inch so it sits a bit higher above that blanket silk weed little sinker halfway between there just keep the rig all pinned down probably doesn't need it with this short link but so then we got load clip system with a three ounce lead, called a Nash, uh, not called it, a Nash diffusion lead clip. And we got about oh, three foot of rig tubing because our leaders are banned on couple of sighty waters. And as you probably just saw, saw there, about halfway down, a bit of a, a tungsten rig putty to keep it pinned down. And I've got another bit right at the end there. And about six inches above that, another quarter sinker, which again, me flying back lead sits on. And then all that, I'm just putting into a PVA bag of pellets. So when it lands on that silk weed, it just flattens it. And once soon as it melts, that will sit up above that blanket silk weed. Right, let's get it into a PVA bag and get it back out in the lake. 
Right guys, uh, rod number three, just wound it in. Wasn't as clagged up in weed as the other two rods. Uh, definitely a slightly clear area, but practically the whole setup is more or less the same. But Nash diffusion rig tubing, or that flying back lead, the blah blah blah. Same lead, same lead clip system. The only difference on this one is I got a, I was fishing a bottom bait which is a cell dumbbell tipped with a bit of a fake buoyant corn soaked in a beetling as usual. Always got to have a bit of beetling. Uh, I'm going to cast this one back out. The only difference I'm going to do with this, I'm going to take the bottom bait back off and put a pop up on. But I'm not going to anchor it down by a shot. I'm going to have it popped up the full length of the hook link so it's way above the blanket silk weed so I definitely know it's f fishing good so, I mean, it's only a four inch hook link anyway so it's going to be sort of like a mini zig I suppose really and I think I'll uh, pop up I think I'm going to go for it's one of the cell ones I mean get a pink and white in the pot I think I'm probably going to put a pink one on I don't know maybe white I made it mine one of them cell pop ups anyway Right, let's get it back out in the lake. Alright then guys, just a quick update. All on my own now, it's just gone one o'clock. John and uh, uh, Steve, uh, Keith, left a couple of hours ago. They only uh, paid for uh, 24 hours fishing, so they've gone and I've been on my own for a couple of hours now. But still no signs of fish, no knocks, nothing. Right, guys, uh, nothing happening still. Uh, while I've been sitting around doing nothing, sort of, sort of watching out over the lake for uh, next weekend is the uh, back of the landing net match, so I thought I'd start preparing for that. So I've um, tied a few PVA bags ready for the ready for the back of the landing net charity match next weekend. Oh. I think I'm prepared for that. Reckon I got enough. So doesn't hurt to pre-prepare. So uh, yeah. Not gonna tell you what's in now, obviously you can see the pellets, but I'm not gonna let you in on to the hook baits. That's all gonna be a closely guarded secret. Uh, gotta get a fish this session first. Evening guys, it's uh, about 10 o'clock now and uh, well, it's been quiet to say the least. No knocks, no bleeps, nothing today. Uh, I, I knew this was a hard water before I even come here but to not even get any knocks, bleeps, you know, just some kind of indication of some out there. I mean, there's definitely been no signs of showing fish, you know. Since I've been on my own, when John and Keith left, all I've done is constantly sort of sat in the door with me bivvy. And, uh, sort of been looking out over the water, really, because there's nothing else to do when you sit on your own, so... So, yeah, that's all I've been doing, really. It's just sort of... It's been absolutely nothing showing so so that just goes to prove this is definitely a a hard water I mean I think it's going to take a few more sessions here yet before I before I figure this place out that's for sure uh, 
unlike the island where my intention is to eventually do a blog in every swim <laughs> definitely won't be doing that here because there's bloody over 70 odd swims here so anyway I'm gonna get an early night soon so. uh, morning guys we're at 7 o'clock in the morning now another fruitless night fishing and uh well, I've got about three hours of fishing left so uh Nothing else has happened, so I'm going to try something a bit different. I'm going to wind in the two rods that have got the the pop-up corn and the rod that's got the um, the other pop-up on, but on like a long hook link. I'm going to wind those two in and put out some like mini zigs. So I've just tied up two zigs. Gonna both on small bright hook baits going on the bright. That they can be easily picked out and uh, uh, hook length, so what? About just over a foot long, maybe 14 15 inches long, so definitely going to be above the weed. Uh, both hook baits are 12 millimeter, one's a Hinder's Tangberry Pops, the other's um, a, I think it's a dynamite bait, pineapple and banana, I think it is, but I'm just going on the principle of bright so they can be picked out so gonna try that gotta try summer to try and get a fish in my last few hours of fish in then the zig rod I think I'll just wind that in and then just bang it out as far as I can maybe that's what I've gone wrong maybe I haven't fished out far enough I don't know I mean I think I'm fishing out 50 60 yards maybe I think my better spots are but I know, it's such a big water, maybe I just haven't gone far enough, so who knows, so I'm going to just do that on all three rods, the zig rod, and when I put these two out, I'm just going to bang them out, just as far as I can, who knows, got to try some up, alright, fingers crossed. Alright then guys, uh, I've come to the, the end of my uh, 48 hours here at Horseshoe, and uh, unfortunately it's resulted in a blank so I've uh, tried everything I know to uh, combat weedy lakes and uh, unfortunately it hasn't paid off so as I've said in previous videos whenever I visit a new venue for the first time I don't expect too much I treat it more as a sort of a recce session really just to try and find out what's what with a lake and definitely somewhere like here at Horseshoe it needs a lot more work to find out what's gonna work a lot more research as well I think on various forums and friends to find out what they've done before to work but just one out in isn't definitely nowhere near enough so uh if you take that as an excuse <laughs> so I've started me pack down it can just about make out a lot of me gear in the shadows there Bivy's still up at the moment because uh got a bit wet from the night condensation so I'm leaving that as long as possible before packing down so I'm not packing away a damp bivy. Rods are still out at the moment but as soon as I finish this piece of camera I'm going to be winding in. So Sorry you've had to sit for a blank but hopefully uh, next time here we're resulting somewhat a bit better. So I've got the back of the landing net charity match coming up next week so uh, definitely shouldn't blank at Tobba Manor. So looking forward to that so oh, thanks for watching if you've managed to sit through a whole blank session uh, i will see you next week at the back of the landing net charity match bye bye